Hello everyone. In this video we are going to solve a kinetics problem for rigid bodies but using the work energy principle and not the second law of Newton or the impulse momentum principle. So here you have a uh, basically piston a slider at point A which is going up and down the vertical guide. It is attached to a slender bar pinned at point A, and the other side of the slender bar is pinned to a disc at B, which is rolling without slipping on the horizontal surface. When angle theta is 60 degrees, assume that the system is released from rest, neglect the friction between slider and the vertical walls, and uh, using the numbers given, the mass for each one of these objects and the length of the slender bar, tell us what is the angular velocity when theta goes from 60 degrees to 0 degrees. In other words, A drops completely to the same level as B, and the slender bar becomes completely horizontal. So position 1 is going to be when theta is 60 degrees. So let's write it down. We say at theta 1 equal 60 degrees, we have omega 1 to be 0 radians per second, the system is released from rest, at theta 2 equal 0 degrees, we want to find omega number 2. There is no friction here, and this is rolling without slipping. So, first we need to draw the FBD of the individuals or we can combine them into one system in this case it is better to combine them into one system to avoid uh, bringing the reactions at pin A and pin B okay because there are two reactions at A two reactions at B and they will come into the equations if we look at the FBD of individuals so what we would better do is to combine them into one big system which has all three objects in it and um, as I mentioned in my video on uh, principle of work energy you might remember that I said you cannot always neglect the work done by internal forces so although when you draw the combined FBD you are kind of really neglecting the internal forces because you say they cancel each other but the works the works done by these internal forces not necessarily always cancel in this case they do because uh, typically the force that you have to be really concerned about is friction the, if it's an internal force here there is no friction at pin a or b and uh, whatever reaction you have here call it let's say ax and ay and uh, only AY is going to work on this block because it only moves vertically, AX doesn't. Whatever AY does on the slider, it does the opposite of that to the um, slender bar. And here between BX and BY, only BX does work. So whatever work it does on the slender bar, it does negative of that on the cylinder. And therefore, uh, the work done by these pin reactions is some of it is going to go to zero. So here there is no worries if we combine them into one single FBD. And now if we um, show the FBD, so here this is going to be M of the disk times G. This is going to be M of the bar times G. And this is going to be M of the slider times G then we have a, a reaction here from the wall to the slider we can call it N1 and we have a normal reaction here from the floor to the disk call it N2 and uh, basically uh, when the system starts to move, there is a friction component, a static friction, which gives this guy rolling. Because if you draw the FBD of the disk alone, 
you have px py n2 and m disk and none of them will create a moment about the center so nothing is going to cause this disk to rotate unless you have an initial friction this way okay because when this slender bar drops it wants to push point b to the right and the whole disk with it but the friction is opposing that so it's going to be to the left and then this friction about that center is going to create a clockwise moment and causes the disk to rotate clockwise and move to the right okay but this is a static friction so this is not going to do any work okay it's applied to the contact point which has zero velocity so the work of it is definitely zero so this is um now you always check, make sure there is nothing else. So any contact comes with a normal force and a friction. Here we neglect it. Here is the static friction, we included it. We have the weights, we have uh, the pins are internal forces. We neglect them and that's it. So this is my FPD and then we have my coordinate system. Again, I use the traditional one, X, Y, and Z out of the board. And... Um, then I write my uh, equation of motion, which is in terms of work energy. I'm not going to write second law of Newton. Remember that work energy also gives you equations of motion in general. In this case, we are just after a single number. But if you find it parametrically, it gives you, for example, omega or V as a, a general parameter, right? Depending on the rest of the stuff. So here we do the work energy. And we say the total work done on the system between the two positions is equal to K2 minus K1, where K is the total kinetic energy of the system. And here, when we say 1, again, we mean 60 degrees. When we mean 2, we mean it's completely flat and theta is 0 degrees. So what's the total work here? Well, it's the work done by every single component. So it is the work done by N1 plus the work done by uh, M of the slider times G, plus work done by M of the bar times G, plus the work done by uh, friction, static friction. And then uh, let me move it down a little bit so that I have my room to write. There we go. And then plus the work done by the weight of the disk. And finally, the work done by N2. This is equal to K2 minus K1. And what is K2? K2 is the total kinetic energy of the system. So what kind of motion each object has? This is just a slider. It has pure translation. The a slender bar, the centroid of it does move. And it also rotates. So it has general motion. And the disc also has general motion because the centroid of it does move and it has rotation. So uh, basically, the um, slender bar and the disc have two terms for kinetic energy while the slider has one term. So if you want to write the kinetic energy, it's going to be one half m of the slider times v of the slider in position two squared. That's for a slider plus one half mass of the bar times velocity of the centroid of the bar squared in position two plus uh, one half i about that centroid times omega of the bar in position two squared. So this is for uh, the bar. And then we have the disk. Now for the disk, if we want, since the whole thing is rotating about this point, or it's actually can consider that the center of rotation instantaneous I can combine but I can also write them individually so you could combine the two terms using the parallel axis theorem if you want but you can write them individually too so it's going to be one half m of the disk 
times velocity of the center of the disk, which we call B, in position 2 squared, and then plus 1 half I about B of the disk times omega of the disk in position 2 squared. So this whole thing here is the kinetic energy of the system in position 2. In position 1, I'm not going to write the whole thing because in position 1, the system is at rest. So in situation 1, it's going to be all of these terms except the subscripts going to be 1 instead of 2. But all of them are 0, so K1 is 0. There is no need to rewrite the whole thing. Okay, so this is your work energy equation. Now, let's go and look at every term. By the way, here, when we say point C, we mean the center of the slender bar. Okay, let's go and see what we can write. So, N1 and N2, they don't do any work because this disk is moving, as we said, it is moving in this direction, correct? That's V of the B. And this is V of the A. So the direction of motion of A and N1 are perpendicular. The same thing for direction of motion of B and N2 as well as MG. If you look at MG disk, it's also perpendicular to the direction of motion. So definitely this one doesn't do any work. This one doesn't do any work. This one doesn't do any work. And as I said, since the static friction is applied to a stationary point, that one also does not do any work. So all that do work are the weights of bar and the slider. Good? Now, what are these? In general, if you remember, I showed you that the work done by mg between two positions is equal to negative mg delta y of the centroid of the object, right? This is the formula we had in our lectures. So here, for the slider, this is going to be negative m of the slider. Times g times delta y of the slider, which is point A. Slider is, can, can be considered like a mass point because it doesn't do any rotation, so it can treat it like a particle. The displacement of any point on it is the same at all times. And for the bar, this is going to be negative m of the bar times g times delta y of the centroid, c. Okay, so there we go. I have my work terms, and I can calculate them, right? For example, how much uh, point A has come down, how much point C has come down based on the change in the angle from 60 to 0, we can easily calculate it, and based on the length, that is 1 meter. So when it's 60, y of point A is 1 times sine 60, correct? And when theta is 0, y of A goes to 0. So it's 1 sine 60 minus 0, and sine of 60 is the square root 3 over 2. So the whole... The delta y is going to be square root over 2, square root 3 over 2, but since it's downward, it's negative, correct? Right? So this guy is negative square root 3 over 2, or 1 times sine of 60. M of the slider is also given to us, right? The mass of the uh, slider is 2, the disk is 4, and the slender bar is also 4. So this is 2. And M of the bar is 4. How much is delta Y of the centroid of the uh, bar? So here, this is 1 half. And again, that's theta. So this is going to be 1 half times sine of theta. And when it's 0, C also lays down on the ground. So it is negative 1 half sine of 60. So it's negative square root 3 over 4 instead of 2. So this guy is negative square root 3 over 4 half of delta y of a. So I have the left-hand side completely calculated the work terms. What about the um, velocity terms? So the unknown here is what? It is omega of the bar, correct? When it says angular velocity of what? The bar. So it is omega of 
the bar because disk also has an omega right so when here it says omega it means omega of the bar in position two so this is the main unknown here really this one this is the one that you need to find but if you look there are four other terms that you need to also find v of slider or v of point a v of point c v of point b and omega of the disk so there are five unknowns really in the one single equation and of course you cannot solve one equation for five unknowns unless you somehow relate all of these other unknowns to this omega bar in position two if you can somehow find these relations how each one of them is related to this main unknown of the problem then it's going to be one equation one unknown right so here i'm going to number this as equation one and i need four more equations to find v of a v of b v of c and omega of the disk as a function of omega of the bar right and for that again i can use uh, my um, geometry constraints here or i can use the general velocity formulas that i know in rigid bodies okay if i do the general formulas for rigid body i'm going to relate point c the speed of point c to what to speed of point a and to speed of point b right let's do that so i say v of point c equals v of point b plus omega of the bar cross r of c with respect to b and i'm gonna write this for position two right so if i do that v of c i don't know correct we leave it as is v of b is whatever the magnitude of it is in the i direction correct because clearly you see that um i have b moving in the i or negative i direction so i just write this as vb times i omega bar is in k or negative k direction in this case definitely is positive k because when point a goes down and point B moves to the right, this object has to go counterclockwise. So it is definitely omega of the bar times K. And R of C with respect to B, this is C, this is B. So it is connecting B to C. And remember this angle here is 60 degrees or in general, if you want to write it in position two, that's even easier. Why? Because in position two, the angle is zero. So writing it as a function in position two, and that's all you need. These are all instantaneous values. So if I want in position two, actually, my rigid body looks like this, the slender bar. Your B is here, your C is here. So it's even easier to find that. In this situation, R of C with respect to B is simply negative one half I. Right? So that's all it is. This is negative one half I. Correct? So if you carry out the cross product, V of C is going to be what? It's going to be V of B in the I direction plus k cross i as you know is j but there is a negative so it's going to be negative omega of the bar divided by 2 in the j direction so clearly this is v of c x component this is v of c y component but what we need here is magnitude v c squared so if i want magnitude v c squared clearly it is going to be the square root of uh, vb squared plus this negative omega bar squared but then to the power 2 then power 2 and the square root would cancel each other so this is what you will get this is one of the things that you need you see vc is a function of omega bar but it's also a function of v of b okay so that's not right now completely useful because it is giving it as a function of v of b 
okay? So it reduces one of my unknowns. It takes care of V of C. Now V of C is a function of omega bar and VB. That's good, at least. One of the unknowns is out of the way. So this one, I can consider it as a function of everything else. So now I can also go ahead and relate V of C to V of A, right? Or V of A as a function of V of C. I can do that one as well. Say V of A is equal to V of C, or I can even relate V of A to V of B if I want to, right? If I say V of A is equal to V of B, and then um, plus omega of the bar cross R of A with respect to B, right? What would you get? Well, as I said, the bar is like that. This is point A now. And R of A with respect to B is this whole thing, one unit to the left. So it's negative I, one I, right? So this guy is negative one I. Omega is still omega bar times K. V of B is whatever magnitude of it is in the I direction. And V of A is negative V A in the J direction. It's positive or negative, but we definitely know A goes down. So we write it as negative magnitude times j. And here, if we simplify, right, if we look, here we have uh, VBI and then we have K cross I, right? So if I do that, I will get negative VAJ is equal to what? VBI, right? And then K cross I is J, but there is a negative involved. So it's going to be negative omega bar J. You see that? And what do you get from here? Two vectors are equal. It means the i's are equal and the j's are equal. If the i's are equal, the only i that you have on the left side is 0. On the right side is vb. So guess what? vb is 0 at this point. Just at this point, not always. vb at this point is going to be 0. And if you look at the equality of the j's, what is that? It gives you that VA at this point is equal to omega bar in magnitude. You see? So this V that I needed here, right? If I call this equation number 2, if I plug this 3 into 2, That gives me that V of C squared is simply what? Negative magnitude omega bar over 2 squared. So it's going to be omega bar squared over 4. So now V of C is completely only a function of uh, omega bar. V of B is already 0 itself. So that's another unknown in that equation. So here, this one is taken care of. Also, V of A, or slider, right? This uh, slider here is what? This is V of A, right? If I want, I can write it that way. So this is V of A squared. And V of A, as we found it, it is equal to omega bar, right? So I call that 4. I call this 5. And if I plug 4 and 5 in, that means this term is also taken care of. The only thing left is we omega of the disk, and omega of the disk is not hard to see that since the disk is rolling without slipping, correct? V of the center of the disk, which is V, should be R of the disk times omega of the disk, right? This is the condition for rolling without slipping. Let me see if I can write it a little bit bigger with the thicker pen. So V of B is equal to omega of the disk times R of the disk, right? This is condition of rolling without slipping. And when V of B is 0 from 3, right? Because I'm writing everything in position 2. So from 3, since V of B at 2 is 0, it means what? It means omega of the disk is also 0 in this position. 
and I call this 6. So omega of the disk is also taken care of. Right? So by plugging in 4, 3, 5, and uh, 6 into 1, I can find it as one equation and one unknown. So 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6. Right? Do I need all five of them? I don't think so, but let's see. Um, two I don't need, just uh, three, four, five. Because four comes from two. So if we plug in all of these into one, that means I will get... Here is going to be negative square root 3g. That's also another negative square root 3g. So it's 2 square root 3g. Is equal to. The. Um, disk and v. This whole term is going to be 0. Because both of the terms are calculated as 0. V of c was square term was omega bar over 4 and uh, v of a was the same as omega bar and this m of the slider was 2 this guy was 4 and i about the centroid of the slender bar if you remember it is mass of the bar times length of the bar squared over 12 which in this case is 4 and 1 so it's 4 times 1 squared over 12, so it's 1 third. Okay, so you have 1 half of 1 third, that's 1 6. 1 6 and... Um, uh, so it is going to be... All of the terms on the right-hand side, they have omega bar number 2 squared in them, so you can factor it out. And then you have a 1, 6 for the rotational term. For this translational, it's 1 half 4, so it's 2. 2 times 1 fourth is 1 half. And finally, you have 1 half of 2 is 1, and that's 1 term, so plus 1. And from here... You should be able to calculate omega of the bar in number two. The only thing you have to pay attention is this negative, okay? This is not actually negative, this is positive. Why? Because if you look here, it's a negative of negative, right? You see it's negative del mg delta y and delta y itself is negative. So that's a positive term, this is a positive term. This is work of gravity. When the object is lowered, the work of gravity is always positive, not negative. So pay attention, this is not negative, that's positive. If you solve for uh, omega two here, you should be able to get the answer as 4.52 radians per second okay and this is your final solution okay now here we can do the same problem if the angle is 30 degrees the final angle then these relative positions vectors are not going to be just like negative one half i or i they will have j components but the principle is going to stay the same, okay? The principle is going to stay the same. And it's not going to be as simple as VB is zero, omega of the disk is zero. No, in those situations, there are non-zero values. But using this method of relating velocity of one point on the slider to another point, like A to B, A to C, or B to C, I should be able to get enough equations to get rid of what? Those unknowns here. And then I can also uh, relate omega of the disk to V of point B through the condition of what? Rolling without slipping. 
correct? So I should be able to easily take care of that, right? Because this one gives me one equation relating A to B and A to C. That gives me two more equations. And that means I should be able to, relating A to C, relating uh, B to C, correct? And also A to B, that are all giving you some equations. The uh, condition of rolling without slipping, that's fourth one. So you can uh, re get rid of four of these and relate them all to the fifth entity, which is omega of the bar. So it's not like just because in this case, two of them are zero. If we have the angle theta two different than zero, right? We cannot solve the problem, of course. It just is more involved. These equations, like four, like three or five, they are more complicated. But in general, the solution is the same. So hopefully this problem was useful to you and I will see you in the next example. Thank you.